Well, good afternoon. This is going to be a multi-day, probably multi-week series uh, put into one video about how I'm going to uh, make a paint booth for painting my bear hawk bits and pieces. I'll show you what I've got so far and then we'll go out and we'll take a look at what my plan is. So coming outside here, I've got this. These are all two by two panels. You can see there's little bits of visqueen hanging off of them. Uh, that is originally built by Rob Taylor and he used that to paint his bear hawk. And then Rob gave it to Ken Scott and Ken Scott used it to paint his patrol. So uh, I got it from Ken last year is back behind his shop and laying in the laying down which wasn't good for some of the stuff but anyway so that's going to be the bones of the of the paint booth so here's what I'm planning on doing I can't I can't really load a paint booth from the front and have the door closed there's just not enough room and really it's pretty tight in the shop anyway to put a paint booth right here in the middle so the plan is is to get the wings in a couple of rotisseries take them off the wall of course being in the rotisserie and then I'm going to clean everything on that wall away and that's going to be the side wall of my paint booth and then I'm going to place all those bits and pieces of the paint booth so it's going to be probably about this wide probably about 10 feet wide maybe about 12 feet all the way to the back of the shop and then I'm going to have the side of the paint booth open up so then I can do all the prep work over on this side where the fuselage is all the um, wings will be over here as well and then I'll have the room to go ahead and do all the painting got all the bits and pieces upstairs just have some finishing tapes to do on the landing gear and also the ventral fin once that's done it's time to stop talking about it and start doing it so let's see how it turns out well what a difference a few weeks makes Made quite a bit of progress, not as fast as I'd like to, but uh, making room in the shop. And that's been a challenge for sure, because shop is just full of all sorts of tools and whatnot. Here's what I got so far. I actually cleared the space out, took all the tools out from the side of the shop there, actually washed the floor, put a lot of things on wheels. And if you can see back over here, got my little workbench I put that on wheels so I can move it around and if you notice there's some items missing the lathe is missing I moved the uh, uh, square wheel grinder bandsaw drill press all over here in this corner and everything else is gone I put it in storage so I've got plenty of room now to go ahead and build my paint booth I already measured it out and I've got a plan in place so next is to build a set of wing stands to go ahead and put the wings into the stands off the wall so I can move them around and put up the paint booth. More progress, slow but sure. Now that I have the shop space, it's time to get the wings off the wall and get them moved so I can get the rest of this stuff resorted in the shop and yeah, get going on with the paint booth. Uh, the wing cradles here, you can see I've got a set that I have over here. Uh, those are from Rob Taylor. They're pretty wide. They're about six foot wide. He used a uh, fire hose as the cradle material, uh, to the, I should say the sling for the wings. And they're really nicely made, however, they're just a little bit too big for the shop. I'm not going to be able to wheel around something that's six foot wide out here in the shop and uh, still have room for the paint booth and everything else. So what I did was I went to the EAA website and I found plans from 1987 for wing cradle. And here we go. That's it. Those are the plow. You can see the little... Uh, that's not on the screen, of course. That's just the LCD TV doing its thing. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and modify these, put some wheels on them. A <laughs> fortunate thing for me, I was at the landfill yesterday and somebody was throwing away 
two sets of snow machine dollies. So those are my wheels for the wing cradles. Didn't cost me a dime. So let's get sawing. Okay, we're back. Did a lot more progress since last little video. I changed my mind about the wing cradle. The, the ones that I had that fit on trailer weren't going to work. So I went ahead and made this. It's a wing cradle from a design that you can get on EAA's website. Let me go ahead and unlock the brakes here. Oops. Oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> Lift that up. Lift that up. And this thing here rolls around incredibly easy. Uh, you can see it just leans up in and of itself. It sits in some uh, carpet cradles. And I got the wings off the wall. So that'll be really nice be able to move these wings around with no problem at all. Just basically with a fingertip and they move those. I recommend that if you do a any type of um, setup where you're going to move something with wheels, use large casters. These are 5 inch that I got off of Amazon. Those are 5 inch on the fuselage rotisserie. It makes things so much easier for moving things around. Well, so the next plan of attack is to figure out if I have enough room to put the paint booth with all the rest of the stuff I have in here that I haven't moved outside yet. And the blue tape on the floor here indicates that one corner of the paint booth it will go over towards there and then over there. I think with the wings being as they are I'm going to have to take my work table that I have used to be my fuselage table I've shortened it from 18 feet down to 8 feet put it on some casters uh, just have a work table but I think I'm gonna have to uh, declare victory and advance in a different direction and put that on a uh, trailer and put it outside for the time being to make room for the wings. So let's go outside and take a look at the paint. Here we are outside of my shop, nice sunny day. It's probably mid 40s, uh, middle of October. So uh, let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, Rob Taylor originally built this paint booth for his project. You can see the framing here. And then Ken Scott got it from Rob and used it to paint his patrol project. So I got it from Ken and it was laying down in some water and there's a little bit of damage here and there but all in all it's going to save me a ton of money because lumber prices are still astronomical compared to what they were. They're not like they were earlier this summer but still it's pretty good but this is uh, when I rescued the panels they were all together 12 foot panels of course they couldn't transport 12 foot panels so they happened to have natural breaks here and then just a cross piece so I got a sawzall and I just uh, cut the uh, cut the reinforcing where the where the splices were and then got a knife cut all the plastic out which was completely deteriorated and now I'm in the process of resurrecting the booth and then going to put it into the shop so it's exciting it's very exciting get out of the Sun here exciting stuff to be able to uh, at least visualize that this thing's actually going to get painted and hopefully get in the air. So, to be continued. Okay, back again. What a difference a few days makes. Check it out. I was able to do some work outside, which is good, because now we've got snow out there. It's kind of wet. But as you can see, the floor is clean now. The reason why is because I got all the panels in from outside sorted them out uh, as they were cut apart, got them back together and repaired the uprights or whatever other joint uh, problems it had. Loose screws, uh, little bits of uh, wood that weren't uh, quite up to snuff, but they're all fixed now. So in, uh, in total I have six panels. I have two panels that are 10 foot by 10 foot and those will go one on each end of the paint booth. One will be over there and one over there. And then I have four panels that are 10 by 12. Two of those panels, the first two here that are on the, the front, will be the back wall again, uh, over towards the wall. That'll be screwed together, make a one panel of 
10 foot by 24 foot. And then they have two others that'll be basically the top of the paint booth. And there's one big long open side. It'll become clear once I get it together. One big long open side that'll be basically freestanding so you can get the fuselage and wings in and out without having too much problem. The way Rob designed this paint booth was that it'll have three uprights that are about 10 foot two by twos on that long side that's open. And they plug into those little gizmos right there. Blocks of wood with about a two inch hole. It fits a one and a half inch um, two by two perfectly. And those will be the sockets that those two by twos go up in and help support that long side of that one wall that is just going to be basically visqueen. So time to get skinning these things. I've got some lath. I've got lots of uh, visqueen. The way Rob had done it, which I think was a good idea, was he laid the, each panel on its uh, flat on the bottom or on the, uh, on the floor and then put the visqueen on it and then used strips of lath with some nails to help hold the visqueen down. Uh, staples tend to tear out, so this will help hold the visqueen in place. So now to get started and it'll become clear here in hopefully a couple days once I get this booth set up. Boy, what a difference a day makes and think a little bit. Uh, as I was doing the panels here, I'm putting this lath around the outside to help put pressure on the visqueen all around so it kind of stays. Uh, just stapling it with a bunch of staples didn't seem like a good idea. And Rob, when he originally built his booth, he had it also with lath, although it was a little bit thinner than this. I got this at Home Depot. It's 50 pieces, four feet long. Some are okay, uh, you know, when you're cutting real thin pieces of wood and they dry out, they tend to get some waves in them. But uh, out of the two bundles, I'll be able to finish the panels, no problem. The thing what I was running up against was, if you look at this panel here, this is the one that's going to have the filter at the top. All of these little laths, every single one of them, were hand nailed. Because I couldn't think of any way to do it with a staple gun or anything, so... I did, I used these box nails. That's what Rob did. He nailed all of his lath on. I'm thinking, man, oh man, that was a lot of work. It took me forever to do the lath just around that and also around the door. And also with the lath, uh, it's very easy to split. So one trick that carpenters use, Finnish carpenters, is to dull the end of the nail so it cuts through the uh, the fibers of the wood when you're uh, striking with a hammer instead of splitting the fibers apart. So, you know, I tried it without dulling the ends of the nails and they ended up splitting, so I ended up having to go to the grinder and grinding off a bunch of ends on the nails just so I could hammer them in. I'm thinking, man, this is going to take forever if I decide to keep on doing this. Well, staple gun to the rescue. I thought, man, if I can only get a staple gun that would, uh, would do that and do it pneumatically, and this is what I got at Home Depot. It's an Arrow PT-50, very lightweight, and it uses the T-50 staples. And I got the longest staples that they make for uh, the T-50 uh, series of guns, the manual and also the pneumatic, 9 sixteenths. So they'll penetrate into the wood at least uh, at least half inch, maybe a little bit less, but it pulls it down tight, and boy, what a difference this makes. None of the ends got split. It just went right through the wood, no issues whatsoever. And I accomplished this in just a fraction of the time that it took me to do this panel, hand nailing. And also, while I was out at, at it, I made a uh, little insulated door for my fan outlet. Had to, that's one of the, another task I had to do and it fits into that hole there. So it's coming together. We'll do another chapter here a little bit later. Okay, the last task I needed to complete before I actually start assembling the booth was to seal the garage door and to install that two foot panel that I had made for the fan exhaust. Here's what it looks like. 
The fan itself is going to sit on this little frame and it's going to be screwed from the outside to that panel. I've got an insulating plug in there now, removable from the outside. On the outside of the perimeter of the panel that I built, I use this stuff, just some uh, camper uh, sealing tape because when I uh, put it up to see how tight it's sealed I could see daylight underneath in some spots. Of course the slab isn't um, ab absolutely perfectly level. So that took up any gaps. I put a piece of it on top of the garage or on top of the frame there on top of that plug uh, so the garage door has something to seal against. One thing that was really interesting is the garage door uh, it keystones into the frame to seal it when it's closed so that means when it was raised up two feet to compensate for the panel this whole area here was open you can see daylight all the way through here all the way up on the top and especially over the uh, top of the uh, door there uh, on the uh, the header so what I did was I got some fiberglass insulation, just cut it in some strips and between the uh, trim here and the edge of the door it actually made kind of a nice little place to to stuff that insulation and seal it up. The top was going to be a little bit more problematic. I'll show you what I did there. Quick climb up my trusty little giant ladder. And what I did here is I took a piece of fiberglass bat insulation full width and then I just folded it in half and stuffed it in there. You can see I have the craft faced portion of the insulation uh, doubled in on itself and the soft part of the insulation touching the door and also the door frame. The reason I did that is so it would help seal uh, any imperfections along that and it did just fine. I turned the lights off in the shop and looked at it and it's all sealed around. There's a couple of little spots I had to attend to, like right here in the corner. But other than that, it's done. So that means it's time to start assembling the booth, get the fan installed. Happy day. Okay, I took another couple minutes here just to install the fan before I started setting up the booth, just to give you an idea how it looks without anything around it. That's the fan itself, of course. You've seen it before. Fan is screwed in from the outside, pulling the fan close to the face, which is sealed with this gray tape, using some screws that go on the plywood perimeter. One thing that was really kind of nice, I used that for my downdraft paint booth. I've got a wireless controller for the fan motor. On-off switch is over here on the outside of the fan, but when you're in the booth, it's kind of hard to turn it on and off. So it's got this and a wireless fob, so I'll keep that with me. And that way I can turn it on when I'm spraying. And when I'm done, I don't have to get out of the booth if I don't want to. I can just turn the fan off. So let's take a look outside real quick. It's still a little bit light out there. Uh, just after about 6.35 in the evening. 19th of October. Beautiful Alaska. Nice and cool, and it's raining not a leaf left. But this is what it looks like on the outside, that panel. You can see the fiberglass up there, but this is what we came to see. That's the fan. You can see I've got four screws on the perimeter, just uh, just pull it close right there and it pulls it tight. And then this is the foam board plug that I made to insulate the cover when the fan isn't being used. Put that in there, and I've got a couple screws, and it holds that in place. That's it. Time to go have some dinner. I had to do another quick take. <laughs> Found out dinner's not going to be ready for another 10 minutes. So I decided to go ahead and fit the end wall to see if my little plan works. And it did. Look at that. The fan with the stand everything, it just slid right into that opening. And there's the first wall of the paint booth. 
And there's the other, the other sides that are staged for uh, screwing it together. And you can see here, that's the fan and everything there is outside. I am super happy. This is, this is a good day. It's a really good day. Well, good morning. Here we are and back in the shop and I had just finished putting down the underlayment for the paint booth. <laughs> I didn't realize how much area this is going to take. This is quite a bit, quite a bit of floor space. Can't wait for to actually start getting things painted so I can get the paint booth out of here and get it in more manageable size. The stuff that I'm using down here is stuff called X-Board. I got it at Home Depot, Home Depot Aerospace Supply Center. And what it is is a because floor protectant and also barrier against uh, paint spills. Supposedly has a coating on it that helps keep paint from soaking in. Well, I guess the question is why didn't I just use a regular old blue tarp? Throw that down there, brown tarp, whatever, plastic tarp. Well, a couple reasons. One is I don't like the way tarps lay on the floor anyway. They tend to bunch up under wheels. Um, and also, um, I don't know if any of the tarps I have, if I can be assured that they don't have holes in them somewhere, even a new tarp would be kind of a waste. It's uh, actually a new tarp would be uh, a little bit more than what I've got into this export here. The other thing is like I'm a little concerned about static electricity. I don't know if a blue tarp would be a help or hurt, but in the winter time here in Alaska, when the air is dry, it's very dry, and it really static electricity is a real issue when it comes to uh, plastic up here. So I didn't want to have any static, um, I guess, charged pieces that are going to attract to dust as opposed to repel dust. So who knows? Anyway, going to keep on keeping on. Going to get the walls up now. Okay, so probably next to the last installment on this video segment, I got all the panels up. Isn't that great? So I got these, even the ceiling panels are up. It's like putting heavy wet noodles on top of heavy wet noodles, putting those up. But um, I got it all screwed together. It's uh, relatively sturdy. It's a little bit uh, flimsy on this side because it's open, but the bisqueen is going to come down and uh, those poles there are removable so you can take things in and out. What I'm in the process of doing is putting in the, the filter for the ventilation for the intake there. And I was able to have a little bit extra room in the back. So I was able to tuck a more, couple pieces away, tuck my engine away, and also my uh, four foot brake. Get a little bit more shop room. But anyway, that's about it. Good progress. It was very interesting, very challenging to put those two panels up there and get them up without breaking. But I've been working solo for so long that you just you just figure stuff out. So and I did. So here we go. Get the thing buttoned up and then next will be the final finale, the reveal, if you will. Okay. Here we go. This is the last installment. Found out a lot of things about this booth now that I've got it together. I'll share those with you here in just a second. Let's go over each individual part of the booth here. Intake filter. Got this door. It's basically a storm door from a residential front door that was uh, donated by Ken. He put it on the paint booth when he had it. And this is the side that opens and closes. But what we'll do here is I'll show you the inside first and then give a demo of how that door works. So here we got the inside of the booth. See that's the intake filter. It's just about three times the area of the exhaust fan which is good. And then here's the place where you can put in the wings or the fuselage or whatever else on that side. Those are all removable posts. And over here, I went ahead and brought in the air hose. This is a special high flow air hose with uh, high flow fittings. 
that are especially for HVLP paint guns. And then over here, I put in a power strip. So we have some power in here for lighting. And also here's the exhaust filter and how that gets changed. It's real easy, just a little bit of safety wire around, wound around some screws and pull it open. And the, there's the filter and it's a nice tight fit. <laughs> Hard to do it with, with one hand here. There we go. And that's it. That is the booth. I put in these two little wing walls here to put a, give a ceiling surface for the door or the roll-up door and I'll show you that here coming up right now. All right, I got the video camera up there on the up on the stairs. I'm going to show you how this uh, door works. Uh, what I did was I took a length of PVC pipe, inch and a half, laid it the whole length. It's just a little over 24 and a half feet long, I guess. And what I did was I taped it to the bottom of the bisqueen here. So now what we're going to do is with this paint booth wall, I'm going to go ahead and roll it up. It actually works pretty good. Uh, it's not very heavy. The pipe itself is very light and the bisqueen isn't that heavy either. So let's go roll it up and take a look. Transition to the ladder. And there it is. The part that's nice about this is that I'm not going to be opening and closing this door very often. It'll only be for the fuselage and for the wings. So those hooks and whatever else I have is going to be really handy. One thing I learned though, <laughs> I learned really quickly, is uh, it wants to unroll itself. So you have to keep tension on that end, whatever you roll it up on. And if you saw, I put a clamp on that end to keep it from unrolling until I got over here to this end and got that up on that S hook up there. So let's roll the fuselage in and I'll show you how that works. Just take these uprights out. Good stack in here. Bring the fuselage in, make sure we're not going to nick anything on the way in.
Now I'll put the uprights back in. If you see, I've got the little spray paint marks on the floor, so I know where to line up the 2 by 2s when I put them up in. Not an exact science, but at least they go back in the same spot where they came out. And there you go. And all I have to do is take and drop the, drop the door, unroll it, and go ahead and put the, get the booth together and start spraying. Final recap. Alrighty, back off the, the ladder up here. And you can see the fuselage fits in there nicely. You can turn around and going to be able to spray it just fine. There's one other thing though that I found out when I was doing this paint booth is that the blower motor it's uh, it's too powerful. If you look up here in the corner I wanted the ventilation to go from the top corner over here crossways down here to the fan. The problem being is that the fan itself it moves quite a bit of air and what I did was I went to the local body, I shouldn't say local body shop, a auto body supply place or paint supply place in Anchorage and got a special filter that's meant for paint booths especially for the intake filter. Exhaust filter is completely different and that's the issue right there. Even though I took the filter material and looked at it and tried to um, breathe through it, I guess if you will, just to see what kind of resistance we got. There's a little corner of it. It feels like there's no resistance whatsoever. However, once I got the fan going, it basically sucked this side, all the visqueen in, and really made an interesting spectacle of the whole idea to try it out. So even though the paint booth is complete, like I said, I put these little wing, little wing uh, panels here on the side so we have something to seal the door to. The fan itself is too powerful. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take that shiv on that motor and make it smaller. It's a three inch shiv now and if I take it down to inch and a half I should slow the speed down at least by half. And that way it's not overpowering that filter there. Uh, I guess I should say it shouldn't be overpowering. Exceeding its limitation as far as like how much air is allowed to go through it. I've learned a lot about airflow. I am no scientist, trust me. There's lots of YouTube videos out there about people that have dedicated quite a bit of time in calculating specific airflows for paint booths. I basically just guessed at all this stuff. I ended up guessing wrong. I could just put regular furnace filter on there. Um, I don't know if that would work at all, but it's not going to take any of the particulate out of it. Moving air is moving air. If I take the filter out, it works just fine. No problems at all, but then you have all the contamination that could potentially come into the paint booth, come into the paint booth. So I'm not going to do that. So that's it. That's the last saga of this. I'm going to go right now and I'm going to order some different shiv sizes for the fan. Hopefully get that calculation worked out, start spraying. And I appreciate you hanging in with these videos because I know I started quite a while ago, but still, it's been a process and I hope you enjoyed the process that I went through to get to this point. One other thing I wanted to leave you with before I sign off on this particular video is that Google or YouTube 
now puts advertisements on all of my videos. And just as a disclaimer, I wanted to make sure to let you know that I don't make a penny on any of these videos, not one cent. I never asked for it. I didn't do anything. And my videos at first were without ads, or without ads at the very beginning. But now they put them on there. I guess if they have to, they're a company, I'm using their services for free, so be it. I just wanted to let you know, it's not me. My content is always free. I get ideas from other people, I just conglomerate them and kind of put my little spin on it and then make it happen. And in the meantime, I get products like this. A paint booth I'll use to paint some big parts and then take it all apart and pass it on to somebody else.